Hi friends. Today I'm going to show you a little bit of what I've been working on for embellishments for uh, journals. I started doing this in preparation for embellishing the color theme journals that I'm doing, but decided to just branch out while I had my paints out and keep going. So there are a lot of different colors uh, and types of flowers that I painted here. Uh, my daughter and husband and I all sat down together and painted this weekend. It was so great. Um, but the, first of all, disclaimer, I'm not an artist. My dad actually is. He is a professional, trained, majored in art, you know, master's degree, all of that, uh, and made his living for the most part with his artwork. But I am not. <laughs> I cannot draw people or animals to save my life. But if I have a good tutorial on YouTube or in a book or whatever, I can generally copy what I see being done on things like flowers and food and just things that don't require a lot of super intense realism. So I just wanted to say that out front. I'm not here trying to show off my artistic skills because I don't have a lot, um, but I feel like that I can at least draw a flower that's whimsical and fun and colorful and that would make a fun embellishment for a journal. So. Uh, I watched a few tutorials on YouTube this weekend, and I will link my favorite one below if you'd like to check it out. Uh, I'm not remembering her name off the moment, but she did a tutorial on 10 types of flowers and how to paint them. And here is my worksheet from that tutorial. There is a rose and a cherry blossom and a tulip, and I think this is a, a poppy. I think an orange poppy maybe not I can't remember um, but yes and so for embellishing a journal of course you could do this on it you can use a watercolor sheet as a page in your journal and embellish the corner with a flower or what I plan to do with these is to fussy cut leaving a little white border and use them to glue onto a page or sew onto the corner the edge of a page like that um, these little whimsical Mary Inglebright type roses, I sort of got inspired to make these from uh, browsing Etsy and there was this uh, cute little shop called Mama's Little Market and she made something very similar to this and it's just crayon resist. So remember all the way back to you know grade school and using crayons to draw your image and then putting paint on top of it and the crayon obviously resists the water and so you end up with this cool effect. There is a Black Eyed Susan, sort of. It looks more like a sunshine. <laughs> and there's my attempt at a lavender stem. And here's some of the ones that my daughter did. She's a much better artist than I am. And she has a much more steady hand for small detail. This is her lavender. And she did some blue resist flowers to there. Okay, so this is the exciting part. Do you see how vivid these are? I hope it's picking up on camera. This is a hot, hot pink. And this is not just a normal watercolor set. I will show you in a minute what I used to achieve this color, but this is so fun to me. Um, I'm very excited about this watercolor set. Here's another one that my daughter did. And this of course could be cut out and sewn onto an entire page and journaled over. It's just so light and airy. I love this one. This is a cherry blossom again, and some, this is either lavender or delphinium, I don't remember. And I don't remember what those are either, but they're so cute, just little wildflowers. Here's some more of those little crayon resist uh, roses, but this is the hot red, that's what I call it, fluorescent red. So fun to make. And leaving a little bit of white space, I think is what makes them cool. Uh, my daughter made a few more wildflowers that she plans to frame, but she um, made my favorite wildflower for me, which is called Tansy, and I think it turned out great. So, I thought while I had the video going, I would just um, do a little, I cannot do the tutorial on the tulips and the cone flowers and all of that without a video in front of me, but I will show you real quick the crayon resist roses method if you would like to see it. 
So first we just have a standard 64 box of crayons with the sharpener, of course. Um, and you can do any color. Um, I did both red and pink and they both turned out super cool. So this one is wild strawberry. And you just do a spiral and then connect it. And then you do a little cup shape thing right here. And you can do a little fold over right here if you wanna show that the this last little flower petal was folded over or you can not. Do another one here. Again, I'm not an artist. I'm not good at perspective. I'm not good at making things look realistic. This is more just for fun. Let's try Granny Smith Apple. And so for the leaves, I just do a little shape like that with some I think I actually used a darker green last time. Okay. Make sure you can see this. Okay, I'll zoom in some. Okay, so we were using just the paintbrushes that we've had for years, but last night uh, we ran down to Michael's and got this set. I'm highly impressed with them. I think they were $5.99 and then 30% off. Um, and they have a little rubber grip here, which is cool. But for the most part, this is the, the size you'll need, a five or a six. And I don't think this one came with a five. I think it came with a, here's a five. We'll use a six. And um, this one kind of got, got crimped in the package. But the paints that I will show you, I ordered these from Amazon. The brand is Mozart, Mozart. <laughs> and this is the Coma Rebe watercolor paint set in the Neon Collection. Uh, this is supposedly a small business that makes these. I think it's a husband and wife team. Uh, it's from the UK, and I am highly impressed with these paints. They don't really look like much right here. They look a little bit like a regular set of uh, primary colors or whatever, but watch. Literally comes alive. You can already see it getting pinker. There you go. That is all there is to it. We'll get some green. So fun. So that is the red, the pink, excuse me. Here's the fluorescent red right here if you want to see a swatch of that. And then the orange, which I don't even think we've used yet. Beautiful. This yellow is, my daughter was like, whoa, this is very misleading. It looks normal until you put it on the paper and then it's literally like a highlighter. And then the blue is sort of an electric blue. So I plan to go get some more of the collection in this brand of paint. I like the consistency of it. Um, yeah, I'm very highly impressed. So that is, and then again, like you would just cut around this and attach it to a pocket or a page or at the top of a journaling card, whatever you wish. Uh, the, other, the other paints that I was using is this brand, Niji, I think they're Japanese. Um, I bought, okay, so I just bought this pearlescent last night at Michael's. So they, they sell this brand, but the original place that I bought this was at a little local art shop, but they were about the same price. They are both under $10. Um, the drawback to these is the cakes dry out really fast. Like you'll add water. You notice how these are still staying saturated for you. These don't do that. These almost immediately dry up. So you do use a good bit more water with these, but the colors are very nice. The only thing I regret is there's not really a true green in here. This is more of a dark mint and this is a lime and this is a forest and that's a teal. There's no grass or Kelly green in this kit. <clears throat> that is a drawback. 
This is their standard color kit. But last night at Michael's, we picked up their pearlescent kit and I have not tried this yet, so I suppose better do it now while we have the camera on. I've used Crayola's pearlescent and glitter watercolors and they're both excellent. So it doesn't, you don't necessarily need a high dollar watercolor paint to create the effects you're looking for. That's very subtle, but very nice. Here's a dark red. Let's see if you can see the shimmer at all. Well, I guess we'll have to wait for it to dry. I can see it in the gold a little bit. I don't know about y'all, but watercolors, again, you don't have to be an artist, but just playing with watercolors is so relaxing to me. Um, I don't know what it is, even more than, I love painting with acrylic as well but there is just something about watercolor on watercolor paper. That's a lot like this other one. Again, this set, the Niji brand, will get it done, but I am highly impressed with this Mozart brand, um, and I'm intrigued as to whether or not they have any other specialty collection packs to sell. There's a rose pink. That will be very nice um, on one of these roses as well. So I uh, just wanted to show you a little bit of what you can do with watercolors and watercolor paper. If you don't want to just put them into your journal, if you just want to be, you know, you can just create a tiny, tiny little flower in the corner of your, oops, <laughs> I didn't mean to drop it, in the corner of your page. Um, and that just provides a little bit of interest. And I just think it's so neat to receive a journal that has a few little hand-painted or hand-drawn touches. Um, to me, that just makes the journal seem so much more valuable and fun and one of a kind. But let me know if you use watercolors in your journal embellishments and how you use them, what tutorial tutorials you have found that are um, great to watch if you want to learn how to do simple watercolor shapes and uh, objects. And until next time, stay creative and keep on creating. Bye-bye.